just a few years and you build up, you create things and the next year it's a little easier. But you also have to talk with other teacher, teachers and borrow more. See what they're using. But it's just, you know, I don't want to get stuck in, okay, this is a form we do for this, this is a form we do for that. That scares me because I don't like that because I don't like form after form after form. But, but like what we do is profile the kids, just like every common assessment, we profile the kids. And some of the, I think we didn't have a set profile sheet, and I think maybe every teacher kind of made their profile sheet, and maybe going forward, we can have a set profile sheet and we use that. And that's something when we create the common assessment, we create a profile sheet and we can create that as a package, you know? And that way you can have the tools to use. But it just kind of scares me when we, when we talk about Everybody's doing something different, and that's okay. You can teach your kids different ways, and that goes with your experiences. But as you talk to teachers and see, well, what are you doing? It might not work for your kids, but it's working for my kids because we have different um, demographics in our kids and how they learn and what we need to do. Um, but I think what's very important is just talking to teachers, figuring out what they do, stopping by, what are you doing today? Okay, what do you have to work on? But I do agree when we do our common assessments, let's go ahead and make sure there's a set profile sheet and everybody's using the same thing. We let the kids profile themselves and then they know where they stand and we know where they stand. I think that's where we're going. We're just yeah. reflecting on this year. So, mm -hmm. but I understand what you're saying. Perhaps you spent the, this first year working with DDI, trying to create all these systems, mm -hmm. you never really had time to get to the profile sheet right. per se. But you're already there because you already have your systems in place. And, you know, like when you have 10, 15 years of experience, DDI is, is you do it from the top of your head, basically. And you can look at your classroom and you know exactly where everybody is at. And that's a skill that comes with time. And I'm sure that nobody in the year, you probably have that. Nobody in the year, you can probably look at your class and you go like, okay, uh, these are my tier three, tier two, tier one. These are my tier three, four objective one, but these are my tier two, four objective. Your mind starts like really getting there. And I see what you're saying, you don't want that shackle of everybody doing these forms, which the way DDI is rolled out, it does require a lot of them filling out the sheets. But the moment the sheets become a deterrent to you serving your kids, like you said, tailoring your lessons to them, and it takes away from that, that's we need to reconcile. Like whatever system we have in place, it needs to be tailored to our kids' needs. And if we're building a calendar, then we may need four CIAs instead of six based on our experience this year but also have dates in the calendar that are flexible and start looking at things that we need to like borrow instead of creating them anew and start thinking in our brains like what is it that this year gave me a hard time? So didn't, you didn't get to the profile sheets but you have some, then let's go ahead and share those and then you can make a plan from the beginning of the year you build up your profile sheet for each kid and now you have that already going. And you know what I noticed though? Because Dropbox is great, but a lot of people don't share their things. Because many people have different things, and if you look on Dropbox, they don't have their like, they don't have everything there. And so I think that pulls people away from Dropbox. Because I have a lot of information, I don't put it up there anymore. Because sometimes people move things around, but I don't let that. That's not my main file. But I know a lot of people have great things. They're not putting it on Dropbox, and that's how you find things. So you can go to sixth grade, you can go to eighth grade. There's a few teachers. I know Yakabaski, she puts a lot on Dropbox. Uh, Ramirez, not Ramirez, Rodriguez, she puts a lot. Mr. Mr. Sometimes Mr. O does. I do, but I have a lot more that I, I don't save there. I save certain things there. But I think if everybody goes and share, more people are willing to share things. And if they're saved there, everybody has access to it. And you put things there that you want to share that you think are good, and that's how we, we can share. But again, it's through talking with teachers and finding out what are you working on, do you have something for this, and it does take time, and it's not just a form. You know, there's many days that, you know, previously, I'm looking at my kids, how are they doing, you know, how did they score on this test, going back, looking at their star scores, breaking it down, that's ongoing, and it has you to You know be. what we need to have, because, I, because I'm listening to your concern, Molina, and I think what we need to have, we have a lot of collaboration for stuff that a team builds together. But we never have collaboration, like, if I need something from the team, we never have an opportunity to really bring it up to the team and then be able, so we should be able, when we have our team meetings next year, like, for you to bring forward some of your concerns or needs, and then we all collaborate to help you resolve an issue and item, because everything was geared towards the bigger picture, you know, but then you have to go back and figure out things on your own, so that's another note I'm going to make, like, individually.
individual member collaboration. Uh, so now let's go. Let me make a note of that so I don't forget. The individual member collaboration. Now the next category. Mr. Cool, are you cool what you have? You haven't given me any feedback? Well, I scored a 17, and pretty much, I mean, I just, I think I share with my intense kind of feel. I mean, this, it's kind of hard to tell out this thing generic. You know, everybody has to have some kind of flexibility in terms of dealing with it. But I feel like in the beginning of the year, people should have a standardized forms, you know, that we can use. The, temp the templates. So yeah, the templates for, for profiling. I keep the templates and the forms to the least amount possible, make it as practical as possible as well. Well, it could be targeted to the various takes or maybe the CIAs. We're already doing the CIA, so I think it's a little bit too detailed, but you can always I do thought, it. I thought so too. I, I yeah. thought that the form that I require for you to do the analysis had it's, a lot of questions. It's too detailed and too uh, duplicating. But the, the thing about the form itself is that you just fill out the, the portions that relate to your classroom. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to worry, I, I should make that perhaps clear next time, that the expectation is for you to fill out every single blank that's in there, but rather the stuff that works aligning with what you're doing in the classroom with your kids. Because yeah. they ask a lot of guiding questions, but I don't think everybody knew that the expectation was not for you to fill out everything. Gotcha. Okay. So looking at assessments, with assessments, which is the next section, <coughs> I scored it pretty high. I put a 30 out of 40. Is it out of 40? Oh, were we supposed to do literature too? Or is that? Yeah, just math. Well, math? in the math case, it would be 15, 15 out of uh, 20, okay. which is 75. Because I felt that you guys did a good job putting the CIS together. I felt that all of you were working with the assessments that you, it was very transparent. They were indeed aligned. And the sequence was definitely in there. And you're reassessing previously taught materials. Oftentimes, they had those, not all of them, but there were some of them in there. So I, I felt we did fairly good, but for me to um, score it like exemplary, then it has to be something that's like really, really high level. And I felt, you know, it takes time to get there, but I think for the most part we were all proficient in putting those together. What do you think? Um, I agree with you. I scored it an 18 out of um, 20. Um, I think we did do a pretty good job of sticking to our uh, CIAs. Um, and I don't know, you guys may disagree with this, but I do feel like, um, yes, there should be room for flexibility as far as scheduling, but I do think a common assessment, we should all do it at, at the same time, because um, that would make it a common assessment, otherwise it wouldn't be common. So I think that, um, and I think for the most part we did that, but I know like the last, these last two that kind of so I'm thinking like keep them common for the first four, because I think they would start and then the last two be flexible based on needs, perhaps. Okay. Um, yeah, but I thought for the most part, um, that's, we did pretty good at implementing them. Oh, we did. Yeah. Yeah. What did you score at? 15. CIA, CIA, even though I help with it, so I just was thinking back on my, my six, my tests, and I put a two on a line of state test in college readiness, just because my kids are there, so they don't get the mastery class and the rigorous. Yeah, okay. so that's why I why you scored it. Yeah. Way. I saw your tests. I thought they were really good. I, I saw those tests. I thought yeah. they were rigorous. A lot of the stuff that you were doing in your mastery class was pretty much aligned with what they were doing in their classes too. So I never really saw, I, I know you, you're thinking that maybe the rigor was lower because they were mastery, but when I saw your lessons, actually, a lot of the stuff was the same thing happening in the regular class. Most of the time, if not all the time. Your instructional strategies were geared towards tier three kids, Yeah. but I think the rigor and the content was really aligned across the grade level. Maybe. Uh, I gave it a 13. I just think this is something that gets better with time. And I think we're all aware of like, the faults that we had this year, and then next year we know what to um, do. The thing that brought it down was the transparent starting point. We didn't always see assessments at the beginning of each cycle to like see where we were going. And then uh, the reassessed previously taught standards brought it down. I just thought we could do a better job of that. 
and it, it just kind of goes back to actually identifying what was low amongst all of us and what we needed to do. There's more commun communication, I guess. Um, I thought before, I thought that that meant, because you know how like, we would meet right before and edit it and stuff. That's what I thought that meant. I was like, we did that every time. But what is yeah, it? But we have to see it like, at the beginning of the six weeks to see what we're supposed to be teaching on oh, six like weeks to see where we're going. Oh, then we wouldn't have to edit so it. Four. Yeah. Yeah, and this is global assessment in terms of CIAs and weekly, gotcha. weekly assessment, isn't it? So this was the whole timing. You were seeing the assessment but none of, before the six week cycle. Right. So you were still working on it, tailoring it, right. yeah. but none of the beginning. Okay. Like the first sense. one we saw, because Arrington did it over the summer, but then the rest of them were just kind of. Yeah. What did he score it? I scored it at 13. I mean, a couple things, twos and threes, because. Um, I think we're trying to do too many common assessments because the whole point of common assessment is to sit around and talk and discuss what you taught better, what you felt like you did a great job at. I didn't think we had a lot of that. Um, I think every year how we did the common assessment goes like that every year. Because as we're working, we take like a few weeks before to get it done. It happens every year. Because unless you have time, to get all your lesson plans, to get all your resources, and then make this test too, then that's the only way it's going to happen. Um, we did assign it early on, but as we assigned it, remember, because we, we assigned it who was going to do what early, but it just kind of fell back because everybody had a lot to do. And I have to say, every the past couple years that we've been doing it, that's how it has grown. Yeah. But I think it's, it was a lot better this year. So I'm going to wrap it up now because I know we only have a couple more minutes, but I think we... I think we took some good steps towards identifying areas where we need to work on, and we're going to get together again perhaps next week and com complete the analysis part and the action part as well, so we can have a complete picture of what I need to do and go going back to the drawing board when we plan DDI next year, uh, address all these issues so we can you know, make this real uh, tailored to your guys' needs. Because now that we had a year under our belts, now we have some context as to what we really need, and now you guys can express what you need. Because before it was pretty much us trying to figure out how to roll it out without really knowing how, how it's going to play out in the classroom. So I appreciate you all's courageous mm -hmm. adherence to the uh, <laughs> to the norms, keeping the main thing the main thing, and focusing on what uh, steps we could take to make it better. And the growth mindset also part, and the collaboration piece as well. I like how you all work together. How the team is like so cohesive and everybody's so positive mm -hmm. all the time. Appreciate you helping. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.